Hello everyone, how are you? I hope you're having a good day today. This video is on sexual reproduction. We're going to look at just the very basics here. What is sex in nature and how does it work? There will be a second video on human reproduction and in that we will look at some of the important biology vocabulary as well as some of the difficult questions that come up when we talk about sex in humans. But in this video we're just going to look at sexual reproduction in a more general way. First, a little bit of background on what makes creatures. Humans and all other organisms are made up of cells, which are the smallest unit of living matter. There are many different types of cells and they all do different jobs inside the body of their organism. But the instructions which control cells are usually found inside the cell nucleus, the center of the cell, in a special chemical which you might have heard of. It's called DNA. DNA is a special chemical because it is able to read and store information. And this is how cells know what they need to do inside the body. But DNA and the genetic code can change over time. Mutations and natural selection cause it to change over many, many generations so that a species can change and get new traits. And this is the process that we call evolution. But how do we make a new organism and a new generation? Well, a new organism needs a new DNA combination and humans, as well as many other species, use something called gametes to do this. Gametes are special sex cells and they come in two different types, male and female. Each gamete contains half of the genetic information that is needed for a new organism. And when two gametes come together from a male and a female, they create the first cell of a new organism with a brand new genetic combination. This process of the male and female gametes coming together and then developing into a new organism is what we call sexual reproduction. Many species use sexual reproduction, but not all species. And in fact, the process that came first is asexual reproduction. Let's just take a little sidetrack on that to help us understand better. Asexual just means without sex. And some of the species that use asexual reproduction include bacteria and many types of plants. Asexual reproduction came first and it is still used today. Sexual reproduction is actually much harder to do and slower than asexual reproduction. A bacteria can divide and create many new generations in just one day or even a few hours. One bacteria can become two, two can become four, eight, 16, 32 and so on. Asexual reproduction works well for many simpler species, but most of the more complex species on Earth now use sexual reproduction instead. But why? If sexual reproduction is so much slower and harder than asexual reproduction, why did so many species switch over to it? Well, asexual reproduction does have a few problems which we need to look at. The first of these is low variation. When you reproduce asexually, your children are almost always the same as you genetically, unless there is a mutation. This means that there is a very low variation in genetics and a disease or a change in conditions can very quickly wipe out a whole population which reproduces asexually. The second problem is to do with those mutations which can build up over time. It's important to remember that genetic mutations are almost always a bad thing. They do not give you superpowers. In fact, they lead to your genetic code becoming weaker and harder to read. 
If you reproduce asexually, these mutations build up over the generations and eventually the genetic code breaks down altogether. The last problem of asexual reproduction needs us to look at just those few mutations which are not a bad thing. Evolution works by selecting members of a species with good survival traits. I say selecting because of course nothing really chooses those organisms, but good survival traits means you are more likely to have more children and those children might carry that trait forward into the future of the species. If your species has less genetic variation, then there is less chance of new traits coming out and less chance of the species improving to meet new conditions in the environment. Again, I put that word in quote marks, improving, because we're not really talking about improving, but just changing. But if you have more children into the next generation, then this is the way that evolution judges what is a good or a bad survival trait. These three problems of asexual reproduction are more complicated and you might think sometimes they seem to conflict with each other. But for now, let's go back to sexual reproduction. There are many different types of sexual reproduction. One of the most common that we all know about is pollination. Pollination is how flowering plants reproduce themselves. Flowers are the sexual organs of flowering plants and they reproduce by passing their pollen on to insects. The insects come to drink the sweet nectar that the flower produces and while they are there they pick up pollen on their hairy bodies. They then carry this pollen to another flower and it is passed on to the sexual organs of that flower and this allows the gametes to come together. This is just one type of sexual reproduction. There are other types like spawning or sporing where gametes can just be released into the environment and they can survive there for quite a long time before they eventually come together and start to develop into a new organism. Now though, let's go back to look at sexual reproduction in animals. When animals want to bring their gametes together, usually, although not always, the owners of the gametes have to get very close to pass that genetic information across. This activity of coming close to pass the genetic information across is called sexual intercourse. And so sexual intercourse is an activity that helps along the process of sexual reproduction. So just to repeat that, all sexual intercourse is part of the process of sexual reproduction, but not all sexual reproduction needs there to be sexual intercourse. And not all sexual intercourse always leads to actual reproduction. Let's look now at animal gametes. There are two types of gametes, as we said, male and female. And in animals, the female gamete is called the egg. As you can see in this picture, the egg is a single cell and it is much larger than the male gamete. Here you can see tiny black specks outside the egg and these are the male gametes. Male gametes are called sperm and in animals they have a little tail which lets them swim around and this is called being motile. The job of a sperm is to swim towards and find the egg and when the egg and the sperm come together there is a process that we call fertilization. All of the male sperm are in a race to find the egg and once they do only one sperm is able to get inside. After it does the egg will change so that no others are able to get in. Once the egg is inside the sperm, the egg is now fertilized. It has all of the genetic information it needs to become a new organism. This is the first cell of a new creature. If the conditions are right, the fertilized egg will start to divide into more cells and eventually it will become a fetus and hopefully develop into a brand new creature. 
I say hopefully because the early stages of fertilization and development are very delicate. And if there is even just one tiny problem, this can lead to the whole process failing. This is why human couples with a new baby are usually told to wait until three months before they tell their friends they are expecting a baby. Because in the early stages, the breakdown of the fetus is quite common and it is extremely sad if you have to tell your friends that you have lost a new baby because the process has broken down. Unfortunately, biology is really complicated. And that is our video on sexual reproduction. I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you have, please leave a comment down below or leave a like on this video and maybe share it with a friend who is also learning about this topic. If you like, please subscribe to our channel so that you can keep up with all of our other science videos. Thanks again for watching and bye for now.